All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays. Uh, so today we are going to be doing. We're going to update our list from September on the on the top ten epic void champions in Raid Shadow Legends. Except this time is going to be in order because the last time I did it wasn't in order. Uh, we're just listing all the uh, good epic void champions and ten of them. So yeah, we're going to do this in order. So before we get started, if you guys are enjoying the content on my channel and you guys would like to support me, you can do so by using the links in the description. So one link is for another game I am creating content for, uh, which is Dragon Champions. So downloading the link through my link will help me out financially, as well as the Blue Sacks link for Ray Shadow Legends. Uh, even leaving a like helps with the YouTube algorithm, so that will help me out directly as well and will help support the channel. Also regarding this video, so just a disclaimer, this list is opinion and not facts, so you guys will have a different list but it should be a bit similar so make sure you guys let me know down in the comment section if you guys agree or disagree uh, with anything so now that we got that out of the way let's get started so battle sage is back on this list i know a lot of people do not agree with her being on this list uh but you guys can relax because she's one good epic void champion release uh away from being taken off of the off of the list but for now we'll make a case for her so she has an aoe on her basic attack right here uh, which can be great with a stun set and she can help you clear the first two waves in dungeons uh, without much casualties her a2 ability can remove all debuffs which is amazing for ice golem as well as dragon and also place a 50 percent increased attack buff on allies for two turns and the buff cannot be removed which is even better uh, her a3 ability can help you in fire knight by keeping your cold heart alive to actually do some work when you reach the fire knight because she can apply revive on death on one of her ability one of her allies and lastly, her aura skill uh, is universal, so she boosts speed by 19% in all battles. So overall, she is a solid support champion. And I I believe she deserves to be on this list. Let me know down in the comment section if you guys agree or disagree. So Scylar uh, is a prototypical Spider's Den champion. So she has an AoE on her basic attack, as well as her A2. And she can place a 30% decreased speed debuff on all enemies for two turns, while also decreasing the training meter of all of the enemies by 40%. So she's a very, very good choice for Spider's Den. I've heard some people using her as the affinity tank in Spider's 20. So this built her uh, very squishy, which is not very hard to do. So she, yeah, she is a solid choice. That's why she is on. That's why she is number nine on my list. So number eight, we have Gala Long Braids. So everybody's sleeping on Gala Long Braids. She's one of the best dwarf champions in the game. And she's capable of dealing plenty of damage while also sustaining herself. So her basic attack, she can uh, ignore 25% of the target's defense. And that can also stack with a Cruel or Savage set. Uh, not only that, but she can actually gain a shield equal to 20% of the damage dealt. And I'm pretty sure this works as well with Warmaster. If you have Warmaster on her, because she's a double hitter, so that would be a good choice. And also Fearless Aggression. She has she does a uh, single hit that ignores 50% of the target's defense when attacking. If she has a shield buff, which she will from her basic attack. So her A1 synergizes with her A2. And then she heals herself by 50% of the damage inflicted. So as you can see, she does not she's sustaining herself. She does not need life steal sets. And then she places a shield buff on herself equal to any surplus heal for three turns. That is crazy. I gotta get me a Gala Long Braves. Uh Sheer Swagger attacks one enemy three times, so that's a triple hit. Each hit ignores 25% of the target's defense, and she's granted an extra turn if the champion has full HP after using this skill. So I've seen I've heard people saying that she on her initial turn, she can do finish off two enemies right away which is pretty crazy and she has a universal aura skill increased ally attack and all battles by 25 percent so if you guys have gala long Braids, you guys should start working on her uh you can use her use her in arena for sure use her in uh, many dungeons because she can sustain herself so she does not need a healer so coming in at number seven we have paidma so paidma so coming in at number seven we have paidma so paidma is a defense type champion and her damage is based on uh defense and attack which is pretty weird but that would actually make her do more damage. So she, the only thing I, I'm say, reason I'm saying is weird is defense and attack. So most of them are based on defense if they're defense type. So she double dips into one stat for her sustainability, for her durability as well as her damage outburst. So her basic attack is a double hit. This attack is critical, so you gotta build her with crit rate. She has an 85% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff on all enemies for two turns. So decrease attack on basic attack is one of the best things that you can have. And she can do it to all enemies, which is even better. So that's the reason why she is number seven, and not number eight in uh, Gala Longbraid spot. And she also has an AOE that can decrease accuracy. That's fine. We don't want to make her too OP. Appropriate. She ties when an enemy removes all buffs from the target and places them on herself. So this is good for the dungeon keeps. 
uh, good for arena so yeah she can be usable anywhere in the game and that's why she is number seven on my list so coming in at number six we have man eater so i am kind of biased on man eater because this guy helped me clear um so many parts in the game except he is kind of a troll with his profile picture if you look over here and click on it it's much much different <laughs> so it's pretty hilarious so why is man eater here i wanted to put man eater higher um, but I didn't want to be too biased, so I'll put him number six. If you guys think he should be higher, let me know after I go over his kit. So his basic attack is basically like paid muzz, except it's not a double hit. And if he crits, he does a decrease attack on all enemies. So it's basically the same ability. Siphon is very good. He attacks one enemy, fully depletes the target's turn meter. And he fills his turn meter equal to the amount of the target loses. So that can be a three turn cooldown on max out. And I don't know if it's, bu it's a bug. I think I'm pretty sure it's a bug, but... Even if he doesn't fully deplete target's turn meter, he also he still fills his turn meter equal to the amount that the target has. So which I've seen a lot of people do in clan boss, which I also do. I've also done an end up guy slash review on Manager, you guys can go check that out. Um, Ancient Blood, he's he receives the damage. He takes some damage from his allies, like 5% for each alive ally. But uh, that's that's not an issue because he places an killable buff and a block debuff buff on all allies for two turns. So this guy did help me clear spiders 20 on auto with this ability right here kept my cold hearts alive and also he has a very very good aura skill increase ally hp and dungeons by 33 percent so this is why man eater is number six on my list and po could possibly be higher arguably you guys let me know down in the comment section so coming in at number five we have golden reaper who is one of the best supports in the game but she does not have a heal and also one of the best turn meter boosters in the game so what makes golden reaper very good um also you guys can go check out my in-depth guy slash review on golden reaper for a deeper analysis on the champion so harvest of blood she attacks when enemy has a 30 percent chance of decreasing the cooldown of one of one of a random ally skill by one turn so this ability is very good it can be a 50 percent chance to decrease the cooldown so this is what makes golden reaper very very good uh but it's all rng dependent if if uh it's gonna proc or not also there's an aoe over here that has a 50 percent chance uh, 75% chance when maxed out a placing decrease attack debuff for two turns on all enemies and if they if they are not under decrease attack debuff she decreases the turn meter of each target by 20% so that, as you can see this is very good for arena as well and uh, this ability right here I'm not gonna pronounce it I probably can't even pronounce this right now plays a 30% increased speed buff on all eyes for two turns and boosts her turn meter by 20% so she has one of the bigger uh, turn meter boosts in the game and that's on a three turn cooldown when maxed out and also increased ally ac accuracy and fashion crisp by 40 so pretty subpar or a skill but these three abilities are very very solid so that's why i have her at number five but arguably she can be number six if uh you guys think man eater is better number four we have lua so lua is an attack type champion uh if you build a 100 percent crit rate she's going to be doing an aoe every single time on her basic attack because she attacks one enemy and deals 50 percent of the afflicted damage to all enemies if the attack is critical so if you give a little 100% crit rate, she's always going to be critting because she's void affinity and she does not have, she cannot get weak hits. Uh, this ability right here is very good. You don't need to build her with any life steal because she has an AOE that attacks all enemies three times and each critical hit heals this champion by 2.5% HP on a three turn cooldown. So that is very good. And also lucky shot. She attacks one enemy and the attack fully depletes a turn meter. So that's good on its own, right? But if you get over here, she will ignore shield and block damage buffs, which is very... <laughs> The block damage buffs are very very annoying. Same with shield, so she can she can actually be used in arena as well. So yeah, she is number four on my list. Very solid attack type champion. Coming in at number three, the only good epic void champion from the Sacred Order. We have Light Sworn. So what I like about Light Sworn is he's defense based champion. So his damage is based on his defense, if it says so right over here. So don't just assume it does, but this one does. He has a triple hit on his basic attack. So this guy is a giant slayer candidate right away that can decrease the target's turn rate by 10 percent uh so yeah you can see that that is very good uh triple hits are useful anywhere in the game fire knight clan boss uh wherever you always want to use him uh brutality attacks one enemy and places a 50 percent decrease attack debuff and 30 percent decrease speed debuff for two turns so not only does he decrease attack he also does decrease speed and that's on a three turn cooldown and this ability right here is what pushes him over the top he places a six percent increased defense buff and a revive on death buff on all allies for two turns so he increases defense and plays revive on death and that's on a four turn cooldown so overall he's a very very good champion i have done an in-depth guy slash review on 
like sworn you guys can go check that out if you want and yeah let me know if you guys agree that he should be on the number three on my list coming in at number two we have skull crown so fortunately skull crown is not number one anymore somebody else has taken her place so skull crown skull crown is one of the predominant champions in arena because of her aura skill increased ally speed in the arena by 23 percent i'm not sure how many of you guys actually have her now i think there was a double um or 10 times chance to get her uh, if you, you if you summon from voids i think that happened uh, i don't know how long ago but that did happen yeah so she can increase ally speed in the arena by 23 percent so she can be used as a speed lead if you don't have anyone better if you don't have lord shizar or arbiter you can use that um she's just a powerhouse like if you look at this build right here aoe that places an extra hit if the target has more than 50 percent hp and an aoe right here that places um has a 50 percent chance of placing a weakened debuff for two turns so that is the big weekend 25 percent and she has two passive abilities uh most people don't really utilize this passive ability because they don't use her with Sinesha, but Sinesha is a very good champion so if Sinesha is on the team she revives uh with 30 percent hp and this ability right here is what makes her really annoying she places an unkillable buff on herself for one turn every time her HP drops below 20%. So if you go through the defense mastery tree with Skull Crown and get that retaliation or retribution, I, think, I don't know which one's called, one of those two. If you get that, uh, every time she loses a lot of health, she's going to be countering the whole team with a lot of damage. So she's very good because you don't need to build her with any speed. You just need to build her with as much attack as you can, crit damage and crit rate. So get her 100% crit rate, uh, get her crit damage very high, and get her attack percentage really high, and then she, she's going to be doing work. So if you guys want, you guys can check out my in-depth guy slash review on Skull Crown, uh, where I go more in depth in terms of masteries and artifacts and if it's worth upgrading her skills or not. So she is number two on my list right now. So number one, we have Madame Cerise. So she is a new champion, uh, support champion. So yeah, she is part of the Dark Elves factions. As you know, if you haven't noticed, all the Dark Elves were in my top 10 list. So they need to chill out and start uh, showing some love to other factions. So in the beginning, I thought Madame Cerise was actually not as good as uh, what I was reading from her kit, but she is actually very, very good. Uh, fear is actually a very good debuff as well, especially true fear. So she has a A1 ability, panic spread. She attacks one enemy and then has a 20% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn. And this chance increases 30% of the targets under one debuff and increases 45% of the targets under two or more debuffs. So she's, she's very good paired with another debuffer. Uh, probably... They probably want you guys to pair her with Harvest Jack. Tricks and Treats attacks all enemies and has a 40% chance of stealing a random debuff from each target. And if you max that out, it's going to be a 50% chance on a 3 turn cooldown. So stealing buffs is very, very good. She, she doesn't just take them away. She takes them and applies it on herself. So that is very good. She can steal one from each target. So that is very powerful for Arena. And she can place a block debuff buff on all eyes for 2 turns if any buff is stolen. So again, that is very powerful for Arena and places a true fear debuff for one turn enemies who have buffs stolen. So this ability right here, when all the pieces fall into place, is going to be a very, very powerful ability. Midnight Ritual, she removes all buffs from enemies. And she places a 50% decrease attack debuff and decrease defense debuff on all enemies for three turns. So she can allow you guys, your allies, to nuke them while also decreasing their attack. So that is very, very powerful, especially if uh, people are running, running Maneater or Sir Nicholas or even uh, Valkyrie, she can remove all those buffs that they place, which is great. She places a shield buff on herself, equals 10% of her max HP at the start of each turn. So shield is always uh, good. And when attacked while under shield, she has a 35% chance of placing a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn. So as you can see, she's very, very good support champion, possibly one of the best ones in the game in terms of supporting through removing debuffs and placing debuffs on the enemies, but she does not increase your allies attack or increase your allies defense she does not place buffs on your allies but she can remove them and she's not a healer or a terminator booster but she does the job of as a of a debuffer very very well so right now she is number one on my list for uh november 2019 so if you guys agree with this list let me know down in the comment section and if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way make sure you guys drop a like as it helps out the is it helps with the youtube algorithm i greatly appreciate it and if you guys are new to the channel and you'd like to see, then definitely hit that subscribe button. I make Rich Legends content and Dragon Champions content almost every single day. And while you're at it, if you want, you can enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on all my latest content. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.